I think we have to be honest with ourselves. We got some playoff chaos scenarios coming. Like we got a log jam that could turn into an outright car wreck in the SEC. Uh, the SEC two loss Armageddon is inching closer and closer to being a reality. And if look, if it were mid October, I'd be the first one to say it'll work itself out. I don't know that it's going to work itself out because we are now rapidly like three weeks away from the end of the regular season. Do you know if, if I just do nothing more than simulate things, I don't have to get crazy. Let's say Georgia beats Tennessee this Saturday. They're favored. They're favored by over a touchdown. Let's say A&M beats Texas. It's going to be a really tight game. And elsewhere, just the favorites win. I mean, that's, that's the way a bunch of people would just predict the season to go anyway. If that happens, no craziness. If just that happens, do you understand? We, we, we finished with six SEC teams tied in the standings with two losses. And since we don't have divisions anymore, we got to go to tiebreakers to see who goes to Atlanta. And good luck trying to figure that out. I was talking to some officials from the league last night down at the Alabama LSU game. I don't know which one of you did this over on Reddit, but someone over on Reddit made a machine, a tie-breaking prediction machine, and all you have to do is select the outcomes you think will be on games, and it will tell you, based on the outcomes you picked, what the matchup would be, what the tiebreakers would be. And again, I don't know who did it. I'm just telling you it is on the radar of the SEC League office and they looked at it and said, we can't find a single issue with it. That thing's very accurate. It is spitting out accurate solutions for what the tiebreaker would be. So I know I'm a very polarizing figure on Reddit, but I just want to give you guys your flowers. Someone over there has done a wonderful job, so much so that the league office is not going to acknowledge you publicly, but privately, they see you. The concept of this could be wild. So... I mean, I didn't even mention Missouri because Missouri is about a two-touchdown dog this Saturday. But if they go undefeated the rest of the way, we could have seven two-loss teams tied atop the league standings there. Um, that scenario I just presented you would be Bama versus A&M in the SEC championship game. But we still have several different versions of this that we could see. I think it's going to happen. And then the next thing that I want to talk to you about is this concept that Oh, the conference championship game. The loser's not going to get punished. The conference championship game loser, that's a variable. No, it's not, Josh. No, it's not. You heard Ward Manuel the other night, right? The chair of the playoff committee. He said, we, we can't be punishing. These, this is paraphrased. We can't be punishing teams that make the conference title game and then lose. Okay. Well, I somewhat believe you. Show me that Brad Crawford tweet, by the way, from earlier today. Brad put this out. He said, we got an SEC chaos scenario unfolding. Let's say Texas wins the SEC. Which of these four teams is left out? Bama? So let's say Bama goes to Atlanta. They lose to Texas in the SEC title game. They're 10-3. and three. Their best win is Georgia. Well, I'm telling you, they're not leaving Bama out because that would mean leaving the SEC champion runner-up out, and they're not going to do that. So in this scenario, Texas is in because they won the league. I think Bama would be in because they played for the league title. Ole Miss at 10 and 2, when, when they beat Georgia, they're in. They're in. There's no question in my, in my mind. Tennessee at 10 and 2, they beat Alabama. Yeah, Tennessee would be in as well. Georgia at 10 and 2, beat Tennessee and beat Texas. My answer is Georgia would also be in. Close your ears, Daniel Cannell. Every one of them would be in, guys. In this scenario, my answer is none of them are left out. They're all going to be in. And you know what? They all should be in. So then, as soon as I say that, you're going to come at me and say, well, who are you going to leave out? Well, you'd have to show me the field. But, but I'm telling you, and this is where I just got to be honest and where I get very unpopular. If it comes down to that versus like an at-large team, like an Army or, or, you know, Boise gets the G5 nod and Army's out there undefeated, yeah, I'm putting them in over Army. It's not anti-American. It's not anti-troop. It's just pro-logic. And, and understanding, I want to see the best teams in the playoff. And I want to see the most deserving teams in the playoff. And believe it or not, it's possible to lose two games and be more undeserving than an undefeated from a different level of competition. Um, so the way I think this is going to go, 
is I think there will be one ACC team in this. I think there will be one Big 12 team in this. I think Notre Dame will be in this. I think the G5 team will be in this. And then I think there will be eight spots left. And I think the Big 10 is going to get three of them. And I think the SEC will get five of them. If I had to guess how things shake out, that's how I think they'll shake out as of today. But going back to that point about the conference title loser not being punished, they're probably lying to you. They're probably lying because it's probably conditional. The SEC won't get punished. The Big Ten won't get punished. But it is my belief that Brigham Young could go undefeated, but if they go to Dallas and they lose, they're not going to be one of the 12. Whoever beats them will be in because they're the conference champ. I don't think they're putting a second Big 12 team in in that scenario. The ACC championship game loser I think will drop out. If, if Miami or SMU go into that game and each of them is around the top 12 or in the top 12, I think the loser would be out. So, so I think you absolutely can be punished for being in those conference championship games and losing. But here's a really interesting thing that I think we start, have to, we, we start having to shed more and more light on. If the G5, so let's just say Boise, if Boise goes and they win themselves the Mountain West Conference Championship and Colorado goes on and wins the Big 12, and they're both favored to do those things right now, you know there is a world where the committee has Boise ranked higher than Colorado, and so Boise ends up being one of the four highest-ranked conference champs, and Boise gets the number four seed. And Boise gets a first-round bye, and Colorado's out there having to play a first-round game. I don't think if that happens, Colorado's just automatically the 12 seed. I actually think that'd be like the 9 or 10 seed or something like that. And the reason I mention that is because every bracket that's been filled out, largely at least, has shown you that the number 5 seed is going to be the loser of the Big Ten title game or the loser of the SEC title game. So like it's Texas or it's Ohio State. And every one of those brackets shows you what? It shows you that 5 seed playing the 12 seed. And the 12 seed's always been the G5 team. So you go, you get to beat up on a G5 team, and then you play the four seed as the next round, and that four seed is like the Big 12 champ. And so a lot of these brackets have made people rightly look and say, oh, wow, I want that five seed. We'd be double-digit favorites in both of those games. Yeah, we got to play an extra game, but bring it on. We'll take it. I need you to understand, it's not cemented that way. It's not just locked in that way. Boise... Boise could continue winning and get one of the buys, get one of the top four seeds. And let me tell you what could happen. Ohio State goes to Indianapolis, loses a hard-fought game against Oregon. Or Oregon loses a hard-fought game against Ohio State. So Oregon's, let's just say that happens. Oregon's played out of their mind all year. They earn the right to go to the conference title game. They go in there as the number one overall seed. They lose close. They're probably the five seed. And instead of looking up and saying, all right, we got a favorable draw. We'll, we'll we get our act together. We'll go win this thing. You know what they could be looking at? They could be looking at a first-round matchup against Alabama or Georgia. Because those teams could be sitting there as the 12 seed in that scenario is what I'm saying. And um, that five seed conversation could alter drastically if – one of these G5 teams like Boise ends up getting a first-round bye. That's something to take a look at, man. And I, I also say this now. If you think the SEC or the Big Ten is going to sit by quietly and watch a G5 team lock up a first-round bye, you are outside your mind. I'm not saying they can prevent it this year, but they can indicate strongly behind the scenes. If you let this go down, then don't blame us for what we do in two years when we've got a look-in clause and we could take our ball and go elsewhere, all that's on the table. Should it matter? No. Will it matter? Absolutely.